Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking into more depth about the MFDS examination. I will be presenting it in the form of FAQs. So the first question is, which colleges hold the MFDS exam? Well, both the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh and the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow hold the MFDS exam. In England, you can sit the exam with the Royal College of Surgeons of England. For the sake of brevity, the rest of the presentation will be looking into the Scottish colleges as the Royal Colleges of Surgeons of England exams are slightly different and the formats vary as well. So is there any difference between the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh and the Royal Colleges of Glasgow? The Diploma of the Membership in the Faculty of Dental Surgery, MFDS, is a globally recognised dental qualification and certifies completion of foundation basic postgraduate dental training. The Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh and the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow are both hosting a bicollegiate exam. At any given sitting, the papers sat at each of the colleges are identical and held at the same time. So, there is really no difference between the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh and the Royal Colleges of Glasgow in terms of the MFDS examination. So who can sit the exam? Candidates must show proof of holding a primary dental qualification recognised by the Royal Colleges of both Edinburgh and Glasgow Councils. What is the cost of the exam? The MFDS Part 1 has a fee of £540 with the Royal Colleges in Scotland and Part 2 has a fee of £730. Part 2 fees can differ if the exam are held overseas. The Royal College of Surgeons of England fees Part 1 starts at £535 and Part 2 is £672. What is the MFDS Part 1 format? It is a written exam with multiple choice questions, single best answer type, and it will be 3 hours in duration. The questions carry equal marks, the exam is not negatively marked and there are no trick questions. What is the MFDS Part 2 format? This is an OSCE based examination. The 10 areas examined are history taking, usually comprised of two stations, dental, medical and social history explanations, which are usually four stations, diagnosis, prognosis, treatment options and procedures, interpretation of investigations, special tests is one station, managing patient concerns, queries is three stations, gaining consent, hand handling complaints, managing anxiety, motivating breaking bad news is another station. What subjects cover the part one MFDS? The list is not exhaustive, and a link to the MFDS syllabus can be found below, but it covers a wide range of subjects and candidates will be expected to have an excellent understanding on applied anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, sufficient to interpret the common dental diseases. You will need a good understanding of human diseases and it's relevant to dental care. You are expected to have an understanding of cell biology, applied histology. Candidates must have an understanding of those aspects of pathology, immunology and microbiology that are relevant to the dental practice. A working knowledge of the therapeutics, the therapeutic actions and toxic effects of drugs commonly used in dentistry, in particular in the treatment of dental conditions, will also be required. Candidates will also be able to recognise and deal safely with non-specialist problems that may be met in routine practice of any branch of dentistry, manage to treat dental trauma and acute dental pain, and accurately diagnose and plan treatment of a wide variety of routine dental conditions. Where are the exams held? Part 1 is held in the UK twice a year. These are held in several cities in the UK but are also held internationally in Cairo, Dubai, Malaysia. Part 2 is also held in the UK and internationally. Is MFDS a prerequisite for specialist training? No, it's not a prerequisite for specialist training currently, but it clearly puts you in a good standing if you have these letters behind your name. When can I sit Part 2 MFDS? Candidates must provide evidence of having passed Part 1 MFDS at the time of applying for Part 2 MFDS and also provide evidence of completion of a minimum of 12 months full-time postgraduate experience in clinical training. So candidates are not permitted to apply for Part 2 at the same time as they apply for Part 1. Question 10. Can I sit Part 1 and Part 2 together? No. This follows on from the previous question. You cannot. You must receive written confirmation of a pass at Part 1 before applying to sit Part 2. Question 11. How many years postgraduate experience do I need before I sit for the MFDS exam? Well, you need at least 12 months minimum. The requirement was previously 24 months, however the regulations were amended in September 2010 and the requirement is now only 12 months of postgraduate experience in dentistry. This is the same amount of experience as is required for entry to Part 2 and therefore candidates can apply for election and award of the diploma after passing Part 2 of the examination. Do you recommend a reading list? Well, see our video with the link above and check out the link below on a book called Mnemonics in Dentistry, which can be downloaded online. Are there any time restrictions for passing both parts of the MFDS? 
Yes, candidates must pass part two within five calendar years of passing, having passed part one or exempt in qualification. Candidates who do not pass two within five years will be required to sit part one again. How many attempts can I have? Well, there's a restriction. Well, there's a restriction to the number of attempts permitted for each part of the examination has now been put in place, allowing a maximum limit of six attempts at part one and a maximum limit of four attempts at part two. Well, thank you very much for listening. If you've benefited from the presentation, please kindly like and subscribe to our channel. It really helps the channel grow.